You guys ready? Yeah. We're on a tight budget, so we've got to keep rolling here. So my name is Gavin Coyle. I'm with a group called Enoch Collective, E-N-O-K. So we're that blue smiley face. So we are a software development consultancy here in Greenville. I personally live in Atlanta, Georgia with my wife and two kids, third on the way. Just found out we have a boy again. So a girl, boy, boy. Anyone else have kids? You in that life? Yep. So you're probably tired. <laughs> I'm tired too. So, I'm glad to be here. We just drove up from Atlanta to hang out with you. And for accountability, we've got 15 minutes. So, Enoch Collective, we develop custom software. One of the challenges we've faced is how do you find, grow, and keep good talent? Uh, developers, we need developers in here, software engineer. Okay, yeah, here we are. You are slippery people. You guys will move as needed. Uh, and there's a lot of turmoil right now around layoffs, so there's a lot of dynamic things happening. But as we're moving between companies, it is hard to find a place where you want to stay and grow. And maybe companies are not equipped to help you grow. So one of the things that we've seen in our research is people will go where they can grow. So we're going to talk about what does mentorship do for you and your team and for your company to create a place where people just want to be a part of what you're doing because they know that you'll be there, they'll care for them, and you'll help them move forward in their career. So it's a mentorship talk. So Engineer Kit is a platform that's a part of Enox Services. So really quick highlights on what we're going to cover. Uh, I've had around 200 conversations in the last two years of people that are concerned about workforce planning, workforce development. So it just means do we have the people that we need to hit the delivery targets that we have as a company. So in that, I've seen a pattern of challenges or the natural progression that happens in companies as we try to find really hard to find people. And then it moves into, well, what are some solutions that we've seen to be helpful in issues in mentorship into how you would grow people and keep people. And then some use cases that we've actually seen to be pretty fun to talk about. So the challenge we're talking about, it is hard to find, grow, and keep you, software engineers, and then having a production-ready engineer. Some of the major challenges that we face as leaders, so is anyone like a leader of a team, leader of a company, even a startup? Okay, so you guys feel this part. There is compression happening in the market right now, forcing layoffs, forcing decisions to get more out of less with the teams that we have. So there is a challenge when it comes to making the most of what we have. So when we feel that uh, tech talent gap, on the positive side, maybe your business is growing, so you just need more people to take on the demand or reaching that market that you're reaching. That's a good thing. On the flip side, though, some of the challenges can be market and economy cha uh, changes or challenges, uh, so the compression that we're feeling with the economy. Uh, users and tech or processes can change. So if you move from minimal viable product and now you have to scale your product, you need to start thinking about CICD or automated testing or unit testing. Or how are you covering yourself to make sure you're confidently pushing code? As you're maturing in your process, it reveals new gaps in technology that you have or talent that you don't have, so you need more people or more skilled people. So that's another reason that we can feel gaps. And then another is retention challenges. People chase more dollars, people chase a new tech or new career, new challenge if you're an engineer, or people are burning out. I'm sick of this environment. All the work comes to me, I need to find somewhere else where I can breathe. So these are the challenges or reasons that we feel some of the tech talent uh, gaps going on in the market. So what are some common patterns? All right, here's the whiplash. Really quick, I use Miro all the time. It's a big whiteboard tool. You guys ever use Miro? It lights up my world. So if you ever want to talk about it, I can demo to you. I'm just getting a demo right now. Here's a ton of fun. It's free. It is free, baby. Three boards for free. Anyway, I'm now working it. Uh, okay, so quick whiplash. I'm going to take this quick journey with you around things I've seen. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, and then things that are working for companies as we're trying to attract, grow, and keep software engineering talent. All right, so what is the normal process? So as we wade in to think about addressing tech challenges that we have around talent, the first question that has historically always been the first question is, well, who do we hire to fill that gap? Until there's been a shift in 2020 with the dawn of remote work, we're not moving to, well, there's a skill building pattern that is better just to retool or level of people that already have instead of hiring someone new. So if that's not the answer for you because there is challenges, some of the challenges that you'll feel is it takes 66 days on average to find a developer, 13 to $32,000 if it's internal or external recruiting to find the right person, and then again, will they stick around? So there are some challenges on is hiring the right thing for you in this time. If you pass go and say hiring is not right for us right now, the next common question is, well, do we train who we have? Some of the common challenges here is, well, the people that are in production, I can't take them out of production to train the new person because then my production would fall and I need to keep delivery moving. So just conundrum, how do I bring that new person in, ramp them up for an internship, apprenticeship, co-op, whatever it might be. So that person, that's the mentor, or would-be mentor on the right side of this chasm who's already in your company, they're saying, Matt, I could really use some help, 
but the leader right next to them says, we're not a daycare. We're not here to train people. We need production. We need things going out the door. So there's this conundrum of the mentor, a would-be mentor, or think lead developer is saying, I need help. I'm burning out. When they do have help, one of the natural things that happens is, well, I'm going to result to what I know. I'm really good at solving problems. That's why I'm going to be a developer. And I'm just going to head solve that problem for that team member who's asking me a question. So they default to what they know, and they keep digging themselves deeper and deeper in a hole, enabling the team around them to just ask them every time. So then what happens is the key people are burning out because leaders are saying, I can't spare your time right now. You are key. I can't take you into, I heard this dramatic quote, we're not a big here. Let the universities do that. So people are burning out. So that means we're unhappy, our engagement, our performance is dropping. A common form of that is quiet quitting. I've worked with teams as a consultant where people are literally able to, three to four months, hide and not ship any code. They've got a good excuse every stand up. I don't know if you've experienced that. I hope you've not. It's painful. So people start to quiet quit. Uh, and then as we see lack of engagement, well, what must be making them unhappy is we're not paying them enough. So we give them a raise. I've got some friends in HR that told me a recent fact. It only takes 63 days for someone to forget the impact of the raise on their life. And it goes back to them, whatever the root problem was that was making them look somewhere else. So money probably isn't the answer, so what is? So if you hopefully don't get to this cliff, panning out, this is one track here. Some people try to cut it off at the pass and say, look, we've got to find a way to train. So since 2020, the new common answer now for tech talent challenges or tech talent gaps is actually to train or retool or level people up. So in 2020 now, one out of two companies will actually turn to skill training compared to 31% of companies that'll say, we're going to fill the gap in hiring. So this is a good thing because the Forbes article came out, interviewed 3,000 people, asked, what do you want out of work? And 83% of the 3,000 that they interviewed said, a top priority for me is actually skill building. I want to go where I can grow. So that's a good thing. We're moving toward what the market wants, the market being the people who want to hire. They want to learn skills, so how are we helping them achieve that? So moving over here, the most common thing that happens is as a mentor or someone who's been shoved an intern into your life, however that may look for you, uh, you're now tasked with helping someone ramp up on your team. What's common then is, well, I'm going to build your skills by sending you to Coursera or Treehouse or there's this new video series out or new cert that's out. They have their place. Certificates, degrees are great, but do they really speak to your context? We as leaders have to have some responsibility to ramp people up into our context, our code base. As a lead developer, it's your name on that thing. You don't want to just give production over to whoever. You want to make sure that it's not Treehouse teaching them, but you. You're the most equipped. You know what's needed. You know your culture, your process. So as a lead developer, how are you turning yourself into a mentor to pass on those skills and that knowledge to your team? So video training isn't cutting it anymore. So the reason is, another Forbes article, that same 3,000 people that are interviewed, 55% of those 3,000 said the videos they watched didn't hit the mark, they need more training, or it was irrelevant. So you just wasted their time hoping for the best. So they come back to you and they're saying things like, well, hey, I've watched this video, uh, so here's a common story. And uh, can you tell me what this really means for us? Oh, hey, the mentor says, hey, I've got a ping, I've got to take care of a fire. Or someone else in the team has a question. This is an end of cycle where you just seem to burn out. You're being developed. Got a Slack message, got to go. So what's missing? You are the person that has done these things in production. You are trusted. You own the culture. You own the process. It's your name on it. You know what's needed to push a meaningful code or meaningful features out there. So more is caught than taught. If you've got kids, raise your hand. They should speak to you immediately. If you tell them, don't ever watch Netflix. It's a waste of time at night. But all they see you do is watch Netflix. What do you think we're going to do? What's the norm? It's going to be, well, I'm not watching Netflix like your mom or dad. So more is caught than taught. The people that want to grow in the trade that you already know want to see you do it. They know you went to school, they know they went to school, but what does it mean to do this in your context? You know, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, please help me. When you talk to people that have mentors professionally, 97% of people that have professional, or 90%, 97% of professionals that have a mentor say it's valuable. So when you ask them, is it valuable, they say yes, of course. Going back to that same Forbes group where they interviewed 3,000 employees, 32% said they believe the training should be more social. And they wish it was in smaller bites so they had time to apply what they were learning instead of this long course and what do I do with this. So they need you. You're the interpreter. You know the context. You know the process. So that's all nice. Great. That's a magical feeling to talk about mentorship. But I need time for this. So when we interview mentors or would-be mentors, the biggest pushback is literally out of time. I'm already burning out. If I go on a vacation, I have to take my laptop. You're telling me i got to do something else. 
what we're saying is we've seen that mentorship is just a way that you can work. It's a form of collaboration. It's a form of empowering the team. It doesn't necessarily mean more time. It's just life on life here in the trenches with some techniques that we've seen to work. So it's not additionally more time. The other pushback is, well, what the heck do I say? If someone comes to you, let's say someone comes here tonight to Jim. Jim's an awesome dude. Say, Jim, look, whatever you do, can you please mentor me? Jim may be like a gear in the headlights and say, well, I don't know what to do with you or what to say to you. That's exciting. I'm flattered. But how about now? I don't have time for this right now. Or I don't know how we're going to interact. So that's a normal reaction. So what if you've been equipped and trained as a mentor to pass on your knowledge and skill to someone else? The magic secret sauce of what we've seen in our research and talking to hundreds of people, leaders, and would-be mentors and developers is that if you add a technique called professional coaching to what you do as a mentor, it actually flips it on its head. Does anyone know what professional coaching is, International Coaching Federation, any of that stuff? I see a head back there. So this is a form of, I trust the person I'm working with to have the answer inside of them. I just need to ask them a question, help them discover it make their own decision, it's their decision, they'll own it. I'm not a mentor telling them what to do, they'll learn how I think they should learn, I'm empowering them to make their own decision. So professional coaching is about listening, asking open-ended and powerful questions, helps them to discover their own next steps. So if you do that as a mentor, check this out, the one right in the middle, number two, training, like a mentor, and coaching combined, leads to an increase of 88% productivity for those you impact, compared to 23% of training alone. Training here could be mentorship or it could be go to Coursera, whatever it might be. And the reason is you're empowering that person to own their own trajectory. Where do they want to go within the bounds of your company? But really, how are they going to get there? It's up to them. It's up to how they're going to connect the dots that make sense for their journey. And then engagement's another buzzword. A Gallup study said organizations with strong coaching cultures have 70% more engagement than those without. So engagement has been, I care about the mission, I care about the people, I care about the business, I care about the team. I'm chomping at the bit to show up at work in a while because I see my mentor caring, and I see that they empower me and trust me. So moving on. Here's a quote. So one of the cats, this guy's a graver, not gonna say his name, he's in Greenville. He used to be at Accenture, a bunch of other consultancies. He's in his 60s, so he's been doing this thing. He said, I, what used to take me 90 minutes to help a teammate now takes me 10 minutes as a coach. And it's just by sitting back, listening to how they're thinking, observing, ask them a question, and empower them in their strengths to go make a decision. Of course, within guidelines, right? If they're not ready for production, don't give them access to production. So be a good person as a mentor. Don't let them fall off the cliff. But within reason, he said, man, it just takes them 10 minutes now to ask them a question. They get their own light bulb, and they go do it. And then they get better results, and they learn faster that way. When someone is the butterfly flapping their wing over the water to do the butterfly effect, you heard of that? With a butterfly flapping their wings over the water to create a tsunami. So when your things can have an impression on complex systems. You ever heard of that? Butterfly effect, right? So if you're the first butterfly in your team, being the mentor, what could come from that? Is it going to stop with you, or is there going to be progression or momentum from what you do? We've seen it creates a sticky culture. Culture's a fun word for whatever is left in the room when people leave. It's how we treat each other. So if we all leave here, come back, the way that we interact is going to feel like it's stuck here, and we're going to talk the same way. So if we have good humor, we'll remember that. If I'm a jerk to you, you're not going to want to come back to here. So the culture of the room sits uh, with how are you interacting with 76% of employees are more likely to stay with a company that offers continuous training. They want to go where they can grow. And here's the fun one. 89% of those who are mentored go on to mentor others. So 9 out of 10 people that you would impact as a mentor, it's going to keep moving. So it's not going to stop with you, it's going to move into a cultural impact. So if you're in agriculture, it's kind of like how mushrooms in the soil share nutrients between the plants. A mycelial network, we need biology people. Okay, we can talk about that another time. So mushrooms are like mentors. They help share nutrients and knowledge between plants or people on so I've got a bio background, so go ahead and learn on that. <coughs> okay, so what are some things that we're seeing in people using this? So again, the challenge that we face is it's hard to find good talent, production rate talent, hard to grow them, hard to keep them. So some use cases that we've seen, starting with finding good talent. There's a startup we're working with out of Raleigh that actually is mentoring up and coming talent from local code schools and universities to do early talent sniffing or talent scouting, if you will. So it's like this working interview for free because this person just needs experience which they can't get. So they're willing to show up and be part of the team in a safe way. So they're actually mentoring people in the city to see what to hire this person. Do they fit our culture? Do they fit the drive that I'd want to have them have? So we've seen this create a tech talent pipeline for mentorship in your city. Uh, there's a tech, uh, a tech council that we're working with in two cities in Tennessee. One ends with Nuga, one ends with Asheville. 
won't say their names, but there's uh, tech partners there, tech council, some other locals that care about the workforce in Tennessee, and they're actually working growling schools and universities with local employers, and they're creating this mentorship network in the gap where local employers put the people in to snip out and invest in the local community to create a tech talent pipeline in that city. So it could be for your company, it could be at a city level. Uh, around growing, we've seen uh, there's a product company working with that's using mentorship to onboard talent rapidly. They're called Skill Accelerator, so it's a whole fun thing we talk about. What is the end result in mind? Where are you at? Let's focus on those things and not anything else to get you up to speed. Uh, mentorship also around helping mids become seniors. There's a consultancy actually here in town we're working with. They've got 40 devs. They're extending. How are they moving their mids to seniors? And also, there's one tech stack most people use for the government sector. They're teaching them private sector stacks as well prepare for being nimble between teams. Uh, last one, time is up, key. Uh, we're seeing groups extend care through mentorship. People stay longer, increasing retention by years, which is a lot for engineers. And then a consultancy they're working with, we're seeing renewed energy and confidence in their developers who are becoming lack of engagement, or having lack of engagement. Last thing, then I'll shut up here. We are wanting to grow a mentorship network here in Greenville. If that's interesting to you, we have a remote community today. We're looking to actually create a chapter here. So the next time that we are going to meet with Mr. Mike Bauer. Anyone know Mike from Smith Drug here in Greenville? He's an awesome dude. So he's a director of development there. We're going to interview him, talk about his mentorship journey, how he's mentoring his culture. Uh, so it's a remote meeting, March 26, 5 p.m. Talk with me. I can get you more information on that. It's remote. It's pretty easy to drop in. Mentorship's interesting. We also have mentor training, a part of Engineer Kids, to level up your teams. That's it. Sorry, I went over. Thanks for having me.